So recently, my uncle came to me and asked, son, could you tell me what is chat GPT? And I was surprised because he is quite old for this kind of technology and also he is not very tech savvy. But still he knew what is chat GPT and he wanted me to explain to him how exactly it works and how he could use it in his life. Well, it was very inspiring for me to see that. But at the same time, I thought that, okay, let me try to create a video wherein I try to simplify chat GPT to the best level possible because obviously it's a complex topic. Topic. and I even I am not from AI ML or data scientist background right so what I did I tried researching on it and I have tried creating a mind map today we'll create a mind map to understand some basic nuances of chat GPT in a simplified manner obviously there will be technicalities but let's start with it and see how it goes and I am pretty sure by the end of it if you'll talk to anybody in this area you won't be clueless about it you will at least make some sense of it that what these guys are talking about so let's start with this video and i really hope this will add some value to you so without further ado let's get started so i really hope by the end of this video we together would be able to define what is chat gpt what are some basic features of chat gpt and how we can use it in our life so let's get started so friends before we get into chat gpt let's take a small detour to understand some basic terminologies which are very important. What is AI? Now I know you have heard it a lot. Let me explain it to someone who's still confused. So AI is artificial intelligence. As you can see, under our artificial intelligence, there is a subset which is called as machine learning. Within machine learning, you have deep learning. So all this falls under artificial intelligence. So in very layman terms, what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is a process of taking your human intelligence and putting it into a machine. As simple as that. You want a machine to work like humans and mimic the things which we do on day to day basis and then probably replace us on in many of the activities which we do. That's what robots and everything is being made for. So that is at a very basic term what this is what artificial intelligence is. So under artificial intelligence, we have machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of AI which focuses on training a machine using algorithm, machine learning algorithms to do certain tasks which are repetitive in nature. So you feed, you train the model, you tell the machine what to do and then that machine will slowly and gradually learn it and do it. I'll give you a very layman example. Okay, so suppose you used to on a daily basis try to take data from multiple systems, multiple CRM systems, for example, and then take it into an Excel and then process it, understand, apply formulas and logic, everything to take out marketing insights out of it based on your understanding. If you put all that in understanding into a model, give that model the logic and everything, then that whole activity which you used to do as a marketing analyst can be done by an AI service so i hope you get it okay so it could be applied at anywhere okay. deep learning is again a deeper subset of machine learning where we get into the neural networks kind of things what is neural network in our brain everything is communicated through neurons so deep learning goes into that those kind of algorithm which use neural network uh, to understand human behavior and this is very important because then this you know this directly relates to chat gpt because Using neural network itself, the chat GPT model, which is a subset, sub model, because there are various other models which I'm not covering. This is very basic. There are multiple models, but neural network and models under neural networks is what chat GPT basically uses because it helps a machine to perform image recognition, for example. For example, if you give a machine with this uh, neural network algorithms, continuously you will show the image of an elephant again and again and again slowly and gradually it would start recognizing the features of the elephant and then it could very clearly understand okay this is an elephant and this is a tiger for example basically chat gpt is what chat gpt is natural language processing so that you could understand what a human is speaking and then respond as if a human is responding that's what is natural language processing text to speech or speech to text so all these are examples, but I hope you get some gist of where we are. So this is the world where we are in. Now in this world, there has been a star which is born and that star is Chad GPT. So now let's understand what Chad GPT is all about. So friends, let's try to decode Chad GPT. We'll go step by step. So don't get confused. We'll, we'll go to this mind map and understand everything. So Chad GPT is what? Chad GPT is a GPT model. This is a large language model which is used for building chat GPT. Now what GPT stands for? 
G stands for generative, T is pre-trained and T is transformer. Generative means it's a part of a generative AI. Generative AI is a field wherein the model, if you use a generative model, it will always generate human-like response. It could be in terms of text, it could be in terms of images, it would generate something out of, you know, out of its own understanding. That is what is generative mean. Pre-trained. So when this whole thing was set up by OpenAI, OpenAI built ChatGPT and OpenAI founder Sam Altman and Elon Musk is also involved in OpenAI with uh, different AI experiments and ChatGPT was one of it. So when it started, they started feeding millions and billions of diverse internet data into this model and they pre-trained this model with lots of inputs and lots of iterations. They tried giving a different scenarios and tried teaching this model you know how to respond to any query or any question after that comes transformer transformer is the actual model if you say if someone comes and asks you which uh, ai model is used in chat gpt you could say transformer model so what is chat gpt chat gpt is a large language model large language model uses neural network architecture Neural network architecture we discussed a while back. How brain neurons communicate with each other in a similar way. Input in black is sent. There are some hidden layers wherein all the complex, very complex calculations runs and then there is an output which is generated. All these red neurons are hidden from everyone. You need to just give the input and you get the output. For example, if you type a query in chat GPT, you just get the response. But behind the scenes, there's a lot which is happening. So that is where this comes in. This transformer model, okay, and this large language model is, you know, one and the same thing, okay. But transformer model is also used in DALI. DALI is a different product and platform given by OpenAI to generate images. So you could type a description, a dog with a cap on his head and sitting on a beach, for example. So it will create that kind of a image automatically taking your input. So that's another product of OpenAI. Uh, which is uh, which is uh, there on OpenAI platform, which is DALI. So how this transformer model works? Well, a transformer model was trained. It was trained with a lot of data, lot of diverse data to generate human response. Now, how it analyzed that, how it would respond like a human? What is the difference between a human and a robot? Have you ever thought? Like how you would analyze? Because you have always seen robots talking in a very similar manner or a very similar way and the response is always the same kind of, right? If you think, because it's a machine, it will always give. So what your computer, your computer will always give you the same answer if you ask the same question. But humans are not like that. Humans work with their own weights and biases, their own thoughts their own philosophy right so those weights and biases needs to be fed into this model so that it could generate human like risk for example if you ask uh, come and ask me that what's your favorite pastime so i could give you three four different answers based on my mood suppose if i am with my family i want to uh, just have good food if i am with my friend i want to go out and have fun so there are weights and biases based on the question you're asking and as a model you have to understand where is that weight is and based on that you have to come up with a risk. so that's what happens using a mechanism which is called as attention management attention management is a concept in which this model automatically decides that on in this whole sentence which is the most important part where i need to focus on. so for example when you read a book you highlight sentences with a marker why you highlight because you want to give additional weight to that particular nugget of learning or wisdom you have got right similarly this model does and a good example could be an orchestra or a symphony which runs, okay? There would be a conductor who would be waving his hand and then all the musicians will understand that what kind of input they need to give into the instrument so that the desired music or the desired output could come. And there could be several musicians and every musician is understanding what level of weight or what level of attention or what level of bias they need to give to their specific instrument so that at, as a whole the output looks beautiful. So whenever you are confused just think of that orchestra and the guy who's waving the hand is your model. That's what the, your model is doing. Your model is instructing these neurons to act as a symphony, to act as an orchestra. So I hope you have a fair understanding of what is chat GPT. So friends, now let's understand that when you interact with ChatGPT, how exactly it works. I have tried distilling it at a high level in these five steps. However, there are detailed steps as well if you go deeper. But just to keep things simple, the moment you enter, that is called as your input step. Moment you write a question, 
um, it would go as an input to the chat GPT model. The moment it goes to the model, the second step is processing. In processing, suppose you wrote one sentence or multiple sentences, then this processing step would divide or subdivide this whole thing into, suppose if you write four sentences, for example, then it would break it into words and then it would further divide it into small, small units or chunks and then assign tokens to it. So this process is also called as tokenization. In tokenization, it will break down and convert it into tokens. It helps ChatGPT to understand the query better. And all this is done using the neural network architecture, which we have discussed. For example, you wrote a sentence that cat sat on and then asked ChatGPT to complete the sentence. So the cat sat on, all this will be divided into different, different uh, tokens. And then ChatGPT will use its own mechanism which is called as context understanding. In context understanding the same logic will come which is called as attention management. Because the cat sat on, here the chat GPT has to understand that where it has to emphasize the more. Whether it is the cat sat on the where. From where the weight will come, the maximum weight is on which particular part so that it could analyze and generate a response like the cat sat on a mat. Everything that happens during context understanding. In context understanding, uh, you use your neural network architecture, your self-attention mechanism uh, using transformer model to understand the context behind it. Once that is done, and once the context is uh, you know, generated, then at the next level, again, a new set of tokens are generated to prepare the output. So you have got the input, you have tokenized it, you understood the context, now you want to respond. So again, new set of tokens are generated and those tokens are uh, part of your text generation process. And there are multiple approaches. I don't want to go into that detail because it might confuse uh, us a bit. Uh, but text generation has uh, approaches like sampling and beam search. So while chat GPT is producing a response, it could decide what kind of method it has to apply. For example, in sampling at a high level, the, the response might be very random. So the sampling method gives a lot of randomness to the response of chat GPT. Whereas beam search will have more accurate and direct response. So it depends, both has its pros and cons. So if you're looking for an artistic kind of an answer where is there, where there is no objective yes or no, then sampling could be a better thing. Whereas when you're ta talking about, for example, uh, give me the code for this particular thing, then it is more important to do beam search and give you the direct response. This is my understanding guys. Again, I am not an expert in any of this, okay? So based on my studies and research, I'm doing it. Anything you feel I am not saying correctly, correct me. Correct me. You have all the rights to correct me in the comment section or add more information so that everyone could learn together. Okay. So once this is done and finally at step five, these, uh, you know, these tokens which are generated as possible outputs or response to your input, then converted into readable text and then it is uh, shared on the user. So these are five high level steps to understand how chat GPT exactly works. So friends, now as we know some basics of ChatGPT, now let's understand where we can use ChatGPT in real life. I'll give some situations or some scenarios, but there are countless possibilities. And the same things could be used over BART. Uh, and I call BART as uh, ChatGPT's uh, brother from another mother, although these two are fighting with each other, but more or less they have similar functionalities. BART is better in certain things. Let's understand how we can use ChatGPT. So guys, if you ask me about the use cases of ChatGPT, there are countless use cases. You can put it in a one board. So that's why I have distilled it into five use cases which has helped me personally and which is more relevant to people who are working in IT. So the first and the very useful uh, use case of chat GPT is coding. So a lot of people who comes from coding background, but they don't want to code, they can get the snippets of code and then change it, right? Also people who have no coding background nowadays could put the exact requirements and then chat GPT could generate a Python or a Java code for them. And it can also explain what it has done with logic. 
सो इट्स अ वेरी पावरफुल थिंग सेकेंड फॉर सपोर्ट पीपल और फॉर एनी बडी फॉर टेक्निकल ट्रबल शूटिंग यू कुड पुट द प्रॉब्लम और एर डिस्क्रिप्शन इन टू चैट जी पी टी एंड आस चैट जी पी टी टू ट्रबल शूट इट एंड देन फॉलो द सेम स्टेप ऑन योर एनवायरमेंट सो इट्स इट्स वेरी हेल्पफुल गाइज इट इट रियली गिव्स यू अ लॉट ऑफ कॉन्टेक्ट ऑब्वियसली चैट जी पी टी वोट बी एबल टू एक्सेस योर एनवायरमेंट डायरेक्टली बट बट इट वुड अगेन गिव यू अ लॉट ऑफ इनसाइट फॉर जॉब सर्च इट्स वेरी हेल्पफुल यू कुड राइट योर रेज्यूम एंड कवर लेटर यू कुड पुट यू कैन टेक आउट द जॉब एप्लीकेशन फीड इट इन टू चैट जी पी टी एंड चैट जी पी टी कुड कम अप विथ what kind of uh, things you should add into your cover letter or your resume you just need to frame it so that chat gpt could understand your question better fourth one is content creation content creation could be anything writing technical blogs uh, tweets any kind of storytelling youtube videos scripts for videos anything anything which you want to do around content creation is again can uh, you know chat gpt could help you a lot in that kind of research as well and the last but not the least is understanding the technical concepts previously when i used to research for any new concept my first go to thing used to be google but now slowly and gradually i am using both i am using google as well as chat gpt chat gpt could give you a very specific response google will give you very different responses and then you have to go and log in and see see i won't say quit google at because chat gpt could also give you wrong responses so be very careful with that okay you need to apply your brain before just simply blindly uh, believing in what chat gpt has uh, just given you okay so google it out but at the same time you could understand concepts using chat so these are the five use cases which personally has helped me but there are countless in marketing sales but you name it now people are using it as a plug in to uh, you know create beautiful products as well so friends if you like this video i would highly recommend that you go and check out the other video where i have talked about certain it jobs which are at immediate risk due to this whole ai chat gpt wave so it will help you be prepared and informed if you like this video please give a thumbs up let me know in the comments what you would want to learn next we will continue whatever we are doing uh, this was just a detour because there were lot many requests coming on chat gpt if you want me to create some more content on this let me know in the comments i'll see what best i can do so until next time guys as we always do keep learning keep sharing and yes keep hustling bye for now